Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre. For this video I picked stories from the subreddit Am I the A-hole that have to do with siblings. Now let's get started with the first story. This one is from user Firmshare3. For context, even when I, 44 male, was a child I was incredibly into owning property and designing houses. I work as an architect and I'm doing quite well for myself. I grew up in East Germany. I did not grow up in a wealthy family. I had to work hard and insane hours to get where I am today. My wife grew up in an area not far from me and she had to work incredibly hard too. Also for context, my wife and I are childless and own properties in Europe. A duplex here in Germany that we rent out, two houses in Italy that we rent out as holiday homes we currently have offers to sell, and one in Spain that we use for vacations and rent out a room to a friend of mine. So we have a lot of passive income at the moment. My brother, 48 year old male, has a family with two kids and are currently looking to purchase a house that fits all of them nicely. While they have found their dream house, it is out of their budget. Meanwhile, my wife and I are about to buy our fifth house, this time in France. It's going to be one of our largest purchases yet, significantly larger than anything else we have done. It's a great deal on the property however, and ideally what my wife and I want to retire in. Anyways, when having a family FaceTime with my siblings and parents, I brought it up. Initially, very happy for me, my brother mentioned how he needs a larger home for his family and how I should give up on this opportunity to give him the money for his house and spend the rest on refurbishing their new home. I thought this was a joke, so I just laughed and flat out said no. Consider that they've used my holiday homes before free of charge and I have college funds for his children and my sister's child. Also, I bought his family an SUV when his second child was born. However, saying no to this request was apparently the wrong move. My entire family turned against me and started berating me. After 10 minutes of them taking turns telling me to buy my brother a house, I said I'd think about it and left. Mind you, he is by no means poor, he just wants a house that is out of his reach economically. I am a bit of a pushover so after talking to my wife we agreed we could wait and buy their house and rent it out to them at no profit. Apparently this was insulting to him, having his younger brother be his landlord. And my parents said I should just outright give him the money we have been saving. I told them no way and started moving forward with the paperwork on our house in France. After talking to my friends, they said I should put family first and it's not like we're struggling for money. Ah man, money and family, that is always such a difficult topic. I don't think OP is the a-hole for saying no, not at all. I think the parents are acting like a-holes and the brother is acting a little bit entitled of seeing his brother as just a wallet that can give him money whenever he needs it. That's not fair. However, I'm not gonna get carried away with my commentary because OP has given us an update. So let's continue with that. My wife and I discussed it, along with input from friends, and decided that we are moving forward with the house in France. Furthermore, we are selling the two Italian homes since we haven't been there ourselves in a long time and it was only being rented out. We wanted some liquidity given the economy. On to my brother, who turned out not to be telling us the whole truth. A week after the original post, his wife calls me asking to reconsider. Turns out there was a reason, but my brother didn't want to tell me. So I told her either he tells me himself or I won't even consider anything. A week later, he ends up calling and tells me everything. It turns out he had developed a bit of a gambling problem the last two years and has taken a noticeable percentage out of their savings for gambling. Less than 40% but more than 15% according to him. The dream house is now a lot further out of their reach than it was meant to be. Apparently, he has been going to therapy for it for months, but the financial damage it did set them back far. My parents knew about this since the start, and I knew my brother was having marital problems a couple of years ago, but I never asked why as he and his wife were very secretive about details. Turns out, this was the problem. Apparently, my parents had told them to ask me for money, 
but to ask for a lot for me to say no, and then when he rebutted with a smaller amount, I would be more inclined to accept. I had an incredibly harsh conversation with my parents. They feel like I owe the family and it's more their money than mine since they raised me. That's a whole different problem. Our father had a similar problem when my brother and I were young boys. I've experienced what a gambling addiction can do to a family. His children need stability, so it's more a personal choice than financial. I told him about the post and he was mad at first but understood my position after reading through it. After a pretty difficult conversation with him, I offered the rent at cost and once he has built up his savings, we will sell him the house minus any rent he has paid over the time it takes. Basically, rent to own. He happily accepted. However, it is a requirement that he continues his therapy. It's his wife's requirement for their marriage too. So his wife and I agreed to keep in contact about it. I am having my lawyer draft it up. Everything will be in writing. And now it's today. Hopefully we can have a reunion after the lockdown is over and laugh about this. I do hope you can laugh about it, OP. I think you're being incredibly fair with your brother and you are actually helping him out. The one thing I don't like at all is that your parents feel entitled to your money because they raised you. What kind of BS is that? But like you say, that's a whole different problem and a whole different conversation. What do you guys think about all this? All right, on that note, let's move on to the next story. This one is from user Burgundy is Navy Red. Backstory. In the 80s, my mom married her first husband and had my sister. We'll call her H, who is now 32. They divorced in the early 90s because he was unfaithful and she met my dad and had me in 96. My dad died shortly after I was born and in the mid 2000s she reconnected with her first husband and they got remarried. H and I have never really gotten along. She was always very jealous of me because she didn't like sharing mom's attention and we had very little in common because of the big age gap. She was also just pretty mean to me throughout our youth. I chalk most of it up to the fact that, in the eyes of her dad, she can do no wrong and she's basically spoiled rotten by him. Mom didn't like to argue with my stepdad too much, so ultimately H always ended up getting her way. An example of her behavior, when I came out, our mom threw a little party for me. H didn't like that she wasn't the center of attention and threw a huge tantrum because our mother told her she wasn't allowed to cut the cake. She was 27 at the time. Anyway, H is getting married in a couple of weeks time. Expectedly, she's been something of a bridezilla this entire time. She's gotten progressively worse since the wedding planning has started. It reached a peak last week when she essentially told our mother that she wouldn't be allowed to be in any of the wedding pictures unless she dyed her hair. She recently had highlights put in and a family friend made a comment about how nice she looks and how she and H could be mistaken for sisters. Also, she told me that my partner isn't welcomed at all because he has tattoos that are visible when wearing a suit on his hands and neck. And she thinks it looks common and uncouth. This wouldn't be an issue at all except her maid of honor also has neck tattoos and she has no issue with that. Mom was really upset by this and I was annoyed by what I perceived to be a targeted jab at my boyfriend. You see, about 6 years ago when he was 17 and she was 26, she propositioned him to get intimate and was told no. She's held a grudge ever since, I think in part because she was told no for pretty much the first time in her life and also later because he chose to get with me when he had said he wasn't interested in her. By the way, he was fully out at the time she propositioned him and she was definitely aware he was gay. So when she banned him, I kind of blew up at her and called her a spoiled brat and a bridezilla and told her that I didn't want to go to her wedding anyway. She burst into tears and ran out of the room. Naturally, her father took her side and told me what an absolutely rotten person I am and demanded I apologize to her. I refused and he's been hounding me on it ever since. 
As mom doesn't like conflict, she's told me to just apologize to put an end to things, but I don't think I should. It's causing a rift in the family, as stepdad is furious with me for upsetting his princess. H is refusing to speak to me, but talking crap about me to anyone who will listen, and mom is kinda caught in the middle. I'm torn on if I ought to do as mom says and apologize for the sake of peace, or if I should stick to my guns and refuse. Edit to add, in case it's not clear, we've never had a good relationship, and she's been pretty cruel to the point it could be considered emotionally abusive to me since I was very small. She's also been physically abusive at several points throughout my life. This is not a debate of me placing my relationship over my family, but rather one of me finally standing up for myself after years of being a pushover and the aftermath it's caused. Honestly, OP, I don't think you should apologize. You've done nothing wrong. Your sister is being ridiculous and yes, entitled and spoiled and all that comes with that. Your stepdad is a huge butthole for only defending his little princess. He probably doesn't like you because you are the son of the other guy that your mom went to after they divorced, but that's on him and not on you. I do kind of feel a little bit bad for your mom, but it's on her too because she's just trying to avoid confrontation and putting you in the middle. That's not fair. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? The good thing is this story is not over yet because OP has given us a short update. So let's continue with that. I finally did apologize to keep the peace, make things easier for my mom, but told her that my partner and I are kind of a package deal and that either both of us come or neither of us do. She stuck to her guns and said that my partner wasn't welcome, at first maintaining that it was because of his tattoos and then eventually getting emotional and yelling at me that he wasn't allowed after what he'd done to her which confirms my theory that it was because he rejected her years ago. I just calmly kept telling her that if she didn't want him to come, then fine, but not to expect me either. I guess she thought I wasn't being serious, because the day of her wedding, I got a call from my mom shortly before the ceremony was due to start asking where I was. I told her I wasn't coming. I got a lot of rather abusive texts from my stepfather telling me he always knew I was worthless but this was a new level, as well as some direct threats. I ignored them all, though I did text my mom and apologize for causing problems, but I did inform my sister I wouldn't be going. This whole thing culminated with my stepfather and now brother-in-law showing up drunk at my flat and trying to fight me while my sister cried outside. They got removed by building security, and honestly, it was more funny than anything to me. Apparently, I've ruined her wedding day, but I'm really struggling to care. Maybe that makes me the a-hole now, and I can't accept that. Well, OP, it's on them. She knew what was going to happen, she just decided to keep being a blockhead and an entitled brat, and, well, you didn't go to the wedding. Which actually kind of surprises me a little bit that she was so much into you being there, considering she clearly doesn't like you. My guess is she just wanted you there and keep your partner away so that you wouldn't be with him as some sort of petty revenge or whatever. It doesn't really matter because everybody knows that entitled people are basically morons. But then again, that's just my opinion. So, it's time to move on to the last story. This one is from user Problem With My Sister. Basically what happened is I read my sister's blog. It was sent to me by a friend of mine who was asking if one of the characters was me. Spoiler alert, it was me! It's a couple of years old and really popular. She doesn't use our family's real names, but they are very similar and use the same first letter. So think real names Katie, Julia, Marissa and Brad, then the fake names being Kathy, June, Marnie and Bob. It's descriptive enough of our lives and what we do for work that my friend identified me from it. It's mostly about her and her life, but there is still a lot about us. Also for context, a year ago I terminated my pregnancy. It was during the lowest point in my life so far and only she and my husband knew about it. She swore to me that she would take that secret to her grave. Yeah, she dedicated a whole entry to it. A couple of months ago, she and her husband got laid off due to world events. I run my own business that wasn't really affected and I offered her a job to help her out. 
She's not qualified in my field, so I essentially made up a position for her so she could have a steady paycheck. She basically does data entry and other random tasks online from her home. Her blog since then has basically centered on how much she hates it. She called it demeaning work and says a bunch of BS about how I obviously don't respect her intelligence. I say this is BS because 1. She would need years of training to work any of the open positions. 2. I told her what she would do when I offered it and she gushed about how grateful she was and that I was really helping her out. I called her and told her what I had read and how hurt I was. Her defense is that the blog is her online diary where she vents and that I should know not to take any of it personally. She actually had the gall to tell me that she was hurt that I read it. Apparently, the right thing to do was ignore it. I told her off for telling the internet my secrets and dragging me online where I could be and was found by people who know me. She just said she did all her due diligence by changing the names and it wasn't her fault my friend found out. We argued for a bit, it got increasingly heated and I fired her. I told her that if she couldn't apologize or see how she was wrong here, then she wasn't who I thought she is and she could find a job where she felt more respected. I hadn't spoken with her for a week until her husband started contacting me on her behalf trying to get her job back as they needed the money. He claimed she was sorry, but I thought if she was, then she could tell me herself. My own husband is telling me that I am overreacting and that she's family and I should just forget it. I don't agree. I sent my sister an email detailing how much damage this is doing to me emotionally and could do to me financially and professionally. In the email, I am asking her to delete all entries in her blog that include private details about me, my business or our family. So I gave her an ultimatum. She could do as I asked, delete the entries and I will consider it water under the bridge. We can move on with our lives and try to repair our relationship. Or she can continue to ignore me, keep her blog and can consider me out of her life. We can see each other at family events and keep things civil but I will no longer share my life with her. She won't be an aunt to my future children or a real sister to me. Wow, I think that's a little bit harsh for OP. I mean, I think she's overreacting a little bit, although she is in the right. The sister did betray her confidence by blasting her life online. Clearly did not do a really good job at covering things up because OP was found out. Also, if the blog is supposed to be centered on the sister and it's her diary, then why is she venting her sister's pregnancy termination online? That's not right. So even though I do not think OP is the a-hole here, I do think she's a bit overreacting with, you know, cutting all ties and just going no contact or, you know, you're not my sister anymore. But, like always, that's just my opinion and we have an update, so let's continue with that. She replied to my email asking me to FaceTime her. She wanted to talk to me after we both had had a night to cool down. I agreed with her as I was pretty heated at the moment. I talked to my sister early the next morning. We had a really productive conversation. I won't go into too much detail since it was a long and emotional call. The reason she had not reached out during the week we weren't talking was a bit surprising. It turns out her husband knew about the blog but had never read it at her request. After our blow up, he wanted to see what had made me so upset. She allowed him to read some of the entries and he ended up siding with me. There was also some information on him and his family that he was upset about, so they were having a separate fight about that. I guess my email put into perspective to her how much damage her blog and the information she shared there could affect others. She showed me over the video chat that she actually deleted the whole thing. She told me that the blogging started out as a place to vent, but when it got more popular, people started emailing her asking for updates on certain characters. It asked her family. She became obsessed with it, basically. She apologized for sharing my secrets and for being ungrateful about the job. She claims that she was exaggerating in the blog to get more views and likes, and I can see that. Our relationship is damaged, but not beyond repair. She is not coming back to work for me. Instead, I am just sending them a small amount of money to help cover their rent. It's not as much as she was making, but I really do love her and I still want to help her. 
once one of them gets a job, they will get back on their feet. This way, they at least have less stress. Once things start to reopen in our area, she promised to set up a regular therapy appointment where she can vent all she wants and get actual advice, as well as help for what she described as a blogging addiction. Well, in my opinion, that's a very mature way to put an end to this whole thing and start working on mending the relationship, which is a good step forward. And it's also a good thing that OP's sister is gonna get therapy in order to vent about her problems and also get over her blogging addiction. Cool. And so we've reached the end of the video once again. If you liked the video, go ahead and click like. If you did like it and you still haven't subscribed, don't be shy, just click the subscribe button, it's right there. And also, don't forget to join the Lost Genre subreddit where you can cross post stories you'd like me to feature in videos and also, if you want, share your story for me to read it. And so, having said all that, I'll see you guys on the next video.